well, my my father used to used to be on TV. He used to be an actor on uh, in plays. He used to be in the radio. Since I was little, I would always go with him. And while he was on stage, I was kind of behind the scenes, right? So I would hang out in the lighting booth. I would hang out in the control room. I've always had this interest where all the technology is and seeing what's happening on stage as opposed to me, me wanting to be on stage. You know, my dad as an entertainer, you know, everywhere we went, people knew him, people recognized him. That spotlight was not something I personally ever wanted. In fact, that was kind of one of the things I didn't like, you know, when everywhere we went, they, they, everybody knew my dad, right, so. It's okay if there's a little bit of that bleed in there, we just make it part of it, and it can be tucked in, and then when it gets a little louder, but for it to be like completely dry to all of a sudden there's this space. Is it that, jumps out at you. It jumps yeah. out at you. And no matter how hard you try it, who do you pay attention to? Do you pay attention to the guitar? Do you pay attention to the percussion that is now twice as loud because it's bleeding into the guitar track? I see. And there's other things that are supposed to be important there, right? There's like there's a guitar solo that now I'm supposed to listen to. Right. But your percussionist is playing. Your drummer's also kind of like doing his thing. Plus you have this, <laughs> you know, this added playing. drums because of the guitar doing its strumming. You know, it's got to, it's got to pull back. It's it's a it's a laid back feel for what's happening in the song, and I think a lot of elements are kind of like trying to push when it should be pulling back. Why don't we do this? Look, let's go through it again. Yeah, let's right? listen to it and again so it. Dallas can and hear. And A B it, you know, see, like if you want to hear what how you had before to now, it's just a button push. Let's have Dallas, yeah, Dallas sitting come here. Take a seat. In the in the big chair, and yeah. let's have him listen to what this you've is, done. Yeah. So this is the this is the other ones, and then these are the Chinese. I know. I I think it's probably one of the most famous Bolivian songs as far as uh, the melody goes. It's a song by uh, a band called uh, Caracas. It probably is one of their top hits. But it was a very local market, right? Very Bolivian folklore. Everybody recognized the song. And then somebody kind of stole the song. Uh, this group called Kaoma stole the song and turned it into... Um, you know, lambada, which is a, a type of Brazilian dance. And that was a new type of dance, and it blew up. It took a Bolivian song, and it made it something international, and it made us very proud, right, of having something like that out in the world, and that's being recognized out of the world. The melodic part, the rhythmic part of the song, obviously brings back a lot of memories, right, in a, a lot of places. One of the places that I can, like, picture in, in my eyes is when I was, like, probably, like, 12 years old, 13 years old, being at the stadium at a concert mm -hmm. for Caracas, right? And they played the song and just how everybody was, you know? And, and, and when I was a kid, I recognized the song. I, I was like, oh, I know this song. I know exactly what this song. You sing along with it. You're... So it has a meaning in the sense that it, it's, it's part of my childhood. It's part of, of my blood. It's part of who I am. Like, I, I worked uh, on a record a few months ago where one of the songs was just like a small interlude. It wasn't supposed to be, you know, it's like a transition. We we had kind of finished the whole album and we decided to go, okay, let's finish the interlude. So I went in there, did a good like four hour mix. It wasn't it wasn't meant to be mixed deeply, right? And then we like, all right, let's give it a final listen to. We heard it and I was like, well, live with it. Let's see what you think. The next morning, you know, the artist calls me and she's like, hey, I think you're going to kill me. And I was like, I think you're going to kill me. <laughs> and I was like, what's up? She's like, I think I want to go with just like the rough mix from the studio. <laughs> and I'm like, that's exactly what I was going to tell you. Like, <laughs> forget it. Let's just use that raw, you know, that raw track yeah. that came out of that first day of tracking. 
there's something about it. There's a vibe that that has that this one doesn't. 